Hi everyone, this is Victor Lund. Welcome to today's uh, RE Techinar. Uh, RE Technology is uh, very happy to bring these webinar solutions uh, not only to the agents and brokers that we serve, but also our vendor community. Um, we have, I don't know, I think around um, 3,000 technology companies who are who have their products listed on RE Technology, and of those products, um, we have roughly 2,500 products which are driven by um, MLS data, and that could be IDX data or virtual office website data. And we also have, and those, are, those cover about 1,200 companies. So obviously the way in which data manifests itself in technology products in real estate today is a really pivotal and key component of how our industry operates. We're very grateful today to have two experts on our webinar, we have Andy Woolley. Uh, he's, I think, the general manager. I don't know what your title is, Andy, but uh, he's a senior executive with with Homes.com. Um, they also are one of the leading technology providers uh, in our industry, and perhaps have more data feeds that they're managing each day than any other company in the industry. So we're grateful to have Andy here with us. Um, additionally, we have Kevin Green. Uh, Kevin Green oversees the relationship between CoreLogic and the MLS industry in terms of managing the data servers, which are commonly referred to as RET servers. Um, the data servers where technology firms go and get their data. Um, as we go through to the, today's webinar, as you have questions or concerns or whatever, please put your questions in the questions dialog box. Um, after we chat for a little bit, uh, we're going to show you a new product that Tressel, uh, called Tressel that CoreLogic came out with. We're going to help you to understand a little bit about why they created that product and why it might be useful to you. Um, but as you have questions, we'll answer those at the end. So one of the major things, just to set the table, about how real estate has changed in the last year has been the introduction of two components that are driven by the Real Estate Standard, Standards Organization. One of those components is called the RISO Data Dictionary, a Real Estate Standards Organization Data Dictionary. It's an effort that's been ongoing for many, many, many years where technology companies collaborated around trying to work with MLSs to, to use a naming structure for data that is synonymous across all the industry. So a lot of people call it like the Rosetta Stone of MLS data. And the whole idea there is that if we all use the same terminology in our data schema to, uh, through our applications and, and get that data organized in that way from the MLS, uh, that it, it will reduce the costs of the mapping and maintaining data across all those markets. The second thing that has happened is that uh, up until last year, very few MLSs really had APIs available. And if you look across the technology stacks of most technology companies in real estate today, you recognize that APIs are a much better way to get data bases to connect with applications and work flawlessly. So with the RESO standard APIs coming out, um, there's a lot of conversion that's happening uh, in our industry today. So as there are about 700, I think the last count I saw, uh, 710. MLS is in America today. Um, it's kind of a, a crazy number to calculate because some MLSs um, are parts of larger regionals even though they're independent MLSs. So it's, it's kind of a squirrely number. But let's just suffice it to say that there are more than a few more than 700 MLSs in the country today. They're consolidating at the most rapid pace in our history, which is very exciting. Um, I know the Connecticut, uh, two MLSs in Connecticut merged this month. Uh, there's a couple other uh, associations in Florida who intend to merge this month. Those things are really helping to simplify the way in which uh, real estate agents and brokers can deploy applications to larger audiences uh, through their MLS consolidation. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, so as things change, the industry is responding to it. Uh, from the from the, comp from the side of a company uh, like Homes.com, who manages more data feeds, I think, than anyone in America, we're going to learn from Andy Woolley about what some of the complexities are. Um, we were doing just a, a quick calculation before today's webinar about the number of IDX providers that are in, say, more than 100 MLSs. And one of the things we realized, it's a pretty small number, that most technology companies are 
you know, there are probably about 25 or 30 firms across the industry who are actually in more than 100, com in, in more than 100 MLS markets. Um, we also have with us Kevin Green, and as I mentioned before, Kevin runs the, the, uh, the MLS relationships with CoreLogic. And, you know, CoreLogic's challenge, uh, frankly, was converting their 300 MLSs, which represent about 60% of the market, um, over to the RESO Data Dictionary Standard, as well as making sure that their MLS customers are also compliant with the RESO API requirements. So Kevin's going to talk about how his company reimagined the way that they would manage data across uh, all those markets and ways in which they've invited other MLSs, which are not on CoreLogic platforms like Matrix, to also participate by, um, by looking at Trestle. So just to begin, uh, I want to introduce Andy. Uh, Andy, are you with us? I am, Victor. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Andy, can you just tell us a little bit about Homes.com, just like how long you guys have been around? I, I know a lot of people understand you as the portal. I'm not sure how many technology companies understand the products and services that you guys support, both at the franchise level and the brokerage level. So can you kind of give us a little walk around the company and the services it provides? Sure. So we've been around for over 20 years. I mean, dating all the way back to when we were Homes and Land magazine, you know, publishing listing data in magazines that were distributed to convenience stores and grocery stores. All of that mo uh, was moved digitally to Homes.com, obviously. And over the years, that model's changed from a paid placement uh, model to a free placement surrounded by advertising model. So uh, our core consumer uh, product is Homes.com. Um, the back end of homes.com is called Homes Connect, and that's what uh, uh, all of our broker and agent customers use to manage their presence on homes.com, to manage their profile, to manage their listings, to uh, work with the leads that they're getting from homes.com. And then Homes Connect also powers a, uh, a suite of, of agent and broker products. Uh, so, for example, we have a, a, a responsive website platform that incorporates an IDX search. Um, the, the biggest uh, instance of that is we power uh, Remax.com, which is one of the top franchise portals. Uh, so connected to Remax.com are about 33,000 individual broker and agent IDX websites. So, uh, you know, we're doing, we're, we're, we're handling data on a, on a massive scale, on an enterprise scale, both for Homes.com and also to power um, our IDX website platform which in addition to Remax also provides websites for you know, individual brokers and agents. We have about 125,000 active IDX websites on that platform. So, uh, so we're handling both homes.com and a, a suite of uh, professional products for agents and brokers. Um, how many markets do you guys uh, access data in today? All of them. <laughs> yeah. I say that jokingly, but I mean we have so we process uh, about 750 individual feeds currently on a daily basis. Some of those, mo the majority of those are MLS feeds. About 680 uh, MLS feeds, both in the U.S. and and Canada, mainly Western Canada. Uh, the 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 rest of the uh, feeds that make up the 750 would be like rental feeds or foreclosure feeds or uh, you know, we process the, the feeds from Realogy to, for Cobalt Banker, Century 21, et cetera. Uh, we also work with List Hub and process uh, feeds from List Hub uh, to, to populate markets where we don't have direct MLS feeds. So, you know, we, we're pretty much, we, we have data for pretty much every market. We, we process on a daily basis 4.9 million listings. Uh, so we know there's only, you know, about 3 million that are that are active, so we have a, uh, about two million duplicates that we have to process since in some markets we get feeds from multiple sources. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of data going through the system. There's about three million listings currently displayed on homes.com. There's about 2.8 million listings that are displayed through our IDX websites. So, quite a bit of data. How many, uh, how many data updates do you guys manage a day? Any feeling for that? How many well, changes in the set? So we have uh, about 61% of the listings are updated every hour. 
So that's about a uh, 1.75 million listings that are updated every hour. And then uh, only 10% of the listings are, are daily updates. So most of them are happening on a more frequent basis. So, I mean, to give you an idea of like images, that's uh, always an interesting metrics metric that uh, people seem, seem to be interested in. We have about 45 million images and 2.2 million of those are updated daily. So if you break that down, we're updating about 1,500 images every minute. So it just kind of gives you an idea of the scale of the, the updates that we're processing. Wow, that's, I gotta take a breath. <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Um, now, a lot of people think that you, you know, what that the configuration process um, of an MLS should be pretty homogenized now that the RISO standards are in place. Like you should have an expectation that the data dictionary is the data dictionary in every market. Um, can you tell me what your experience has been with that? Sure. Um, we are very much involved with uh, RESO, both, both on a technology level and participating in work groups and whatnot, and just on a business level, you know, trying to further the efforts we are uh, very strong proponents of Rezo and the data dictionary. We, we, in fact, we we went through a, a massive reconfiguration of our system over the past six or eight months to be able to change our underlying structure to be Rezo data dictionary compliant, um, in the hope that uh, Rezo data dictionary compliant feeds would become available. It, it, you can imagine if we're processing 750 feeds, the process of converting all those to Rezo data dictionary is is a, a massive undertaking, particularly when we have to continue maintaining uh, the feeds as we're converting them. So it adds a tremendous amount of workload, but in the long run will be beneficial to us uh, to, to make that transition. What we found is even though, uh, I don't know what the current number of, of MLSs that, are, that have passed their certification, but even though that number is growing, uh, we're still having a difficult time um, with those compliant feeds becoming available to vendors like us. Uh, so we're actively out, you know, reaching out to all the MLSs that we work with, trying to get access to their data dictionary compliant feed. Uh, so far, we've only converted one of our <laughs> 750 feeds to uh, Reso data dictionary feed. Uh, we have about five that are in process uh, that should be converting in the next couple weeks, but that just gives you an idea of uh, Despite all these MLSs actually being certified, not not everybody is is making their feeds available to vendors. So, um, if there's anyone on this call that has influence over that or or wants to make a, a resident dictionary compliant feed available, please contact me because we're trying to convert these as quickly as we can. But uh, back to your question, I you know it doesn't not everything is plug and play. I mean, it's it certainly is progressing and. And Reso Data Dictionary is making it easier for us, uh, theoretically, to have a normalized feed across markets. Uh, but it's not completely plug and play. We have found that even in the, the five that we've been working on, there's some nuances between uh, the individual feeds, which you know I, th I think we sort of expected that. I didn't think we, I don't think we ever thought that it would just be plug and play across all the markets. But um, I think over time, you know, once we get up to 50 or 60 of these, and we've We've mapped out the nuances between those. I think each subsequent one will become more and more plug and play and automated. Um, you know, when you look at at our processing efforts, there's a lot of maintenance that goes into servicing all these markets, right? So if if I look just just since the beginning of this year, we've completed 203 feed modifications and conversions across our 750 markets. So you, know, you multiply that out times four quarters, and you're at 800 feed modifications and conversions every year. So it takes a lot of people uh, to be able to manage that process. And we think that uh, Resident Data Dictionary, as it as it uh, scales out and becomes more available, we we obviously expect that number to be greatly decreased. And we're looking at services like Trestle uh, that can hopefully help us um, become more and more efficient, right? Because the more the more efficient we become at the data aggregation side of it, uh, the the more the the better opportunity we have to redeploy uh, those data engineering resources to 
uh, other uh, innovative type projects, uh, less maintenance and more new development and innovation. So. So those 800 feed conversions, is that the result of like an MLS conversion going from like Black Knight Financial to CoreLogic or something like that or mergers or just changes in configuration of the feed? What, what kind of, how do you characterize those adjustments? I mean, it sounds to me like you're handling maybe 50 or 60 of those feed conversions at any given time. Yeah, so it's, it's probably 20%. Uh, feed conversions, and the feed conversions could be changing from one vendor to another or just changing the way that they're distributing their, their IDX or their uh, data to homes.com. Um, but, I mean, if you just think about it, 700, if every MLS makes, makes two changes a year, which is not unusual, that's yeah. 1,400 changes, right? So, um, you know, just the, the law of averages dictates that the, the more and more uh, feeds that you start aggregating, the, it's you know your your maintenance efforts multiply <laughs> as you right. as you increase. So, um, the, uh, on the call today, there are a lot of CEOs that are probably not um, on the front line as it relates to managing the changes and updates. Um, or and, and I know that you guys. I mean, I I guess by virtue of making these uh, vendor changes, you're still implementing new sites constantly. Um, how, on average, how many hours does it take a seasoned staff member to to connect a new MLS to your system? Is that a one-week project, a three-day project? It can happen in a week if it's a straightforward. You know, there's a lot of back and forth. If, if it's not a file type that we're accustomed to or a distribution method that we're accustomed to, there can be a lot of back and forth. The smaller the MLS, the less resources they have available to to communicate with vendors like us, right? I mean, their their members are their primary customer. Uh, we we fall somewhere below that, right? Um, yeah. So I mean, I we have we have a team of about eight full time data engineers that do nothing but manage the data aggregation and 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 that's not the architecture side of it or the strategy side of it because we have other people that do that, but I'm just talking about eight full-time data engineers that do nothing but uh, feed modifications, feed changes, adding new. I mean, we, we pretty much have everywhere already, so we, we don't add too many brand new ones, but we certainly do a lot of conversions. Um, but that you know, that's just the technical side of it. Then you have the compliancy side of it. Uh, we have five full-time compliancy staff that do nothing but manage the uh, administrative side with the MLSs. So, you know, whether that's uh, handling notifications of, of feed changes or managing display changes, right? Everybody has different display rules for IDX and that compliancy team manages that relationship between the MLS and making sure that our websites are compliant. It could be brokers or agents that are coming into the platform new and have to get their approvals done for IDX. They manage that side of it. So, you know, there's the technical side of this, and there's the compliance, the administrative side of this, both, both of which is very time-consuming and resource-intensive. Excellent. Um, I think that's a pretty good overview. So for people who have questions about uh, homes.com, I, I think they've, you know, they're probably the example of what does it really take when you're, if you wanted to have, nationwide coverage with data and again I think there may be only you guys and maybe two other companies like um, Real Estate Digital and WolfNet that probably have that kind of penetration. Uh, is there anyone else that you're aware of Andy? Well on, on the portal side you know obviously Realtor.com does this on a massive scale. Yeah oh that's right and and they have their top producer products as well so they're like you they're also you know use hydrating Agent and broker products with that with that data feed where we're allowed for sure, um, but anyway, it's it's a it's a pretty thin uh, space of somebody who has has all of those. So if you have any questions for Andy, um, by all means, uh, put them in the questions dialog box, and we'll have them answer them. Um, so now I kind of want to uh, I want to introduce Kevin Green. Um, Kevin's been in the industry a long time. He's a good friend of mine. 
he was brought on to CoreLogic about a year, year and a half ago to manage a project that they have called Trestle. And um, when CoreLogic was faced with becoming RESO compliant in their 300 MLS markets, they took the opportunity to spend a lot of time with their customers and facilitated focus groups and conversations about how they might be able to do it better because effectively CoreLogic has 300 servers, uh, one in each of their MLS markets, um, that is supporting companies like Homes.com and many of you um, with, with regular data feeds every day. And um, so those, those servers had to be you know, completely reconfigured uh, to meet the data dictionary standards and they had to add a new service of a web API to them in order for their MLS uh, customers to be um, RESO compliant. Uh, the good news, I think, is that CoreLogic is 100% RESO compliant across all their markets. But in this process of reimagining how they might effectively do this better, they came up with this idea of Trestle, which is to take all of their market data across all of their MLSs, combine it into one major data repository, and give companies like Homes.com or whomever the opportunity to ex access data in all of those markets where the vendor has MLS approval. And that's one of the things that I think you need to take away from this just for clarity purposes is that having access to Trestle doesn't mean you have access to all of the MLSs who are participating in Trestle. It means that if the MLS grants you a data license and you pay the fee if applicable, then you can get the data from Trestle. So it's a, it's a new destination where companies that approach multiple MLS markets could reduce their costs and improve their efficiency by accessing almost all of the data that they would need for all the markets that they're in from a single data source. So with that, um, I want to invite Kevin to join us. Kevin, are you available? Are you on? Yes, Victor. Thank you. Excellent. So, give us a little background on you and CoreLogic, and then uh, let's and then let's talk about Trestle. Just let yeah, me know when you, you want to the screens. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Victor. Yeah, I, um, Kevin Green. I, I recently uh, came over from uh, Real Estate Digital uh, about a year ago, as Victor mentioned. Um, did uh, managed uh, their MLS channel uh, from business development, uh, and really got involved a little bit in seeing some of the issues uh, from a product that we had there. Uh, as far as what MLS has had and managing the data and as as much as Andy um, in managing the workflow I should say and as much as Andy mentioned the, the pain he has uh, at homes.com of, of managing all those different MLS's data and, and where they are in the workflow and and uh, auditing etc uh, the small a lot of the mid to smaller MLS's don't have the staff and the capacity to do it as well as some of the large and so uh, we, we saw a, a need in there uh, with Trestle to be able to bridge that gap. And with the uh, RESO uh, data dictionary uh, services and, and the requirements that they're, they're requiring, uh, it really uh, kind of forces the MLSs uh, to make a decision and being able to offer that. So uh, it's the right, I think it's the right product at the right time, and it, and it really helps. Uh, it serves both the MLSs uh, from a management standpoint as well as from an MLS, uh, excuse me, from a technology provider and vendors uh, from their standpoint. So, you know, as a, uh, a trestle, everybody always asks, how do you, how do you come up with the, the word trestle? And a trestle bridges two bodies of land, uh, really. And so trying to create a connection uh, or between a, a technology provider and MLS. So it, it's really trying to manage that data as a train, you know, goes, it goes back and forth. We're trying to do that uh, with data from the MLS to the technology provider. So what is it? So Trestle, as I said, is a data delivery and e-commerce platform specializing in property-centric data. And that's a key word for that is property-centric data. Uh, while right now we are uh, offering uh, just MLS data uh, via Trestle, uh, we at CoreLogic are a data company. And so we will also be able to offer uh, AVMs, flood information, uh, all sorts of other different data products that you may want to incorporate into your products uh, via Trestle and add that. Uh, to the MLS data that you're receiving. And, and we'll actually be, I'll show you a slide uh, shortly as far as the roadmap is concerned when that's going to be available. 
So for technology companies that want to display off-market property data, they'll be able to access that through Trestle as well this year. Uh, this year, yes. Yes, they, they would be able to. They would be able to get uh, property record data if they wanted to from there. So, I think uh, this this slide's pretty pretty self-explanatory as far as why the need for Trestle. I think um, Andy really uh, talked a lot about it from your end, and I just uh, explained a little bit from the MLS end. But here's Trestle at a glance, just to show you, uh, uh, you know, a very uh, high level. Uh, of what we see as far as Trestle and those. So you have multiple MLSs uh, that send us a data feed, and that's as, as mentioned before, we'll, we'll put that into a RISO uh, compliant uh, data transformation process so that you can have an aggregated database uh, from there. Oh, can you go back up, please? Thank you. Um, and then we have the uh, Trestle aggregated content, and we can also, and then as uh, Victor just mentioned, uh, we will have core logic content available from uh, off-market property records to AVMs, et cetera, by the end of the year, and you'd be able to access that through a dashboard. Um, not only do the MLSs have a, have a uh, dashboard, but also you, uh, as a technology provider, we have a dashboard which would give you visibility and where you are in the process. So as you know, Andy mentioned, you know, one of the pain points for, for you as a technology provider is, is you know, you send in that form and it kind of goes into the, to the ether or, you know, you, you make a phone call and you, you don't get a call back. Here, uh, we'll give you a dashboard to be able to have visibility in where you are in the process so that you can um, request either a RETS, uh, a RETS feed or an API. So, you know, what are what are we here at at, at Trestle? Excuse me, at CoreLogic. Um, we are we have a proven record of aggregating and protecting data for over 300 MLS uh, organizations, uh, both in the United States and Canada. Uh, so we have them either using uh, one of our uh, MLS platforms or Realist. We do have a commercial uh, risk product called uh, Partner InfoNet um, that is available uh, that's separate from that uh, and, and that have been delivering data for quite some time. And then while, while Victor, we'd love to say that we have 100% of our MLSs uh, have achieved RISO Data Dictionary uh, certification. Some of them um, have not applied uh, as much as we would love to do that on their behalf. Uh, they do need to comply, but we do have over 130 uh, organizations that have achieved RISO Data Dictionary certification. So that's, yeah, let me just clarify that. So um, even if CoreLogic does the work to, per, to make a MLS's data compliant with the RISO Data Dictionary and the RISO API, the MLS itself has to fill out a form and send it into RISO, and then RISO people go and they, they hit the server they look at the data that's on the server and make sure that it's compliant. And they give them a, one of three levels of certification, silver, gold, or platinum, I think, something like that. Um, so there, there are a variety of, um, there is variety to it in, in any case, but it's, it's not always necessarily the vendor and it's not always necessarily the MLS. But um, depending on, if there is uh, somebody that is on that, that list of the, hundred MLSs that are not certified today, it's, you know, probably some combination of their vendor or the MLS that just hasn't completed the task. Um, doing this migration w is ridiculously difficult. Um, so it's, it's, been a, it's been a rough road, and I think that the industry itself um, got caught a little flat-footed, uh, even though it had two years to get ready for it. I think a lot of the activity really happened in you know six months before the deadline. So um, that's the way it goes. But this is where we are today. Um, now, is CoreLogic going to be offering Trestle beyond the CoreLogic market? So will I be able to get data feeds from uh, an MLS that has Rapitoni or Stratus or FBS or Black Knight Financial? I mean, can can any MLS be part of Trestle if they choose to? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, some of the some of those that uh, are already signed up are on, on one other uh, MLS technology platform. Um, you know, with as we said, you know, with over 300 MLSs using uh, are either our MLS platform or Realist, we do have folks that use other applications uh, that are on a, a different MLS platform. So we can support uh, any MLS in the country uh, and deliver that data if requested. Awesome. 
Um, and then so one of the things I think uh, I think uh, uh, Jeremy Crawford over at Riso would, would would love for me to be able to say, you know, that's part of what also started this two years ago, with the uh, the Riso uh, data dictionary feeds and the requirement to to be able to send that. So these uh, the MLSs do need to. Uh, be able to provide that, and so that's the one thing that, that we can uh, do for them if necessary. But if they don't, um, they, they do need to be you know utilizing some type of service. Awesome. I advanced your slide. Sorry. Oh yeah, no problem. So Trestle is a uh, winning solution connecting the market. So as you see, you know we have Trestle in the center because uh, we do see that you, know, you can add CoreLogic products. Uh, to the MLS data to and deliver that to technology providers um, as well as brokers. We do that know that some brokers are you know manage uh, have their own products. Some of the large, uh, large you know there's large East Coast brokers that I know like uh, Long and Foster that's in over 32 MLSs. Uh, so they have the the need to be able to uh, aggregate that data and get their their broker feed uh, as well as they'd like to to add CoreLogic data products as well. And so we'll be able to to do that for all. So um, as you see here with, with, with two, two train tracks, as, as we keep with the train theme, uh, you know, having uh, partners to be able to do that and provide that data in parallel uh, is really what we're trying to do here. So uh, really looking forward to being able to service, serve you as, as being your conduit uh, to provide you with uh, data from different MLSs uh, in a RISO compliant manner. Next slide. Now, I think one uh, did did one of your customers, Austin, did they just set up a development server? They did, a matter of fact, absolutely. So, uh, in, in conjunction with Riso, Riso is uh, you know wanting to make sure that everybody understands what that uh, standard is and and what what's available within it. Uh, and so, Austin Board of Realtors was kind enough to uh, allow them to use a subset of their data uh, to be able to to do have a reference server, and they're doing it uh, via Trestle. So it's, it's a wonderful partnership, and it gives you the opportunity to uh, learn a little bit more about the, what the RISO standard and the RISO standard feed is, uh, as well as having access to uh, some data uh, to be able to develop your products. Do technology companies need to have, um, do they need to have an agreement with Austin in order to be able to hit that reference server to do testing on it? They do, and it is through RISO. It's a RISO uh, agreement, but it's a, it's a really uh, vendor-friendly, I, I should say. Uh, form and it's pretty pretty easy. They just need to register and um, they'll have access. Okay, so it gives them an opportunity to not only to to play with the RISO standard data set, but also to be able to experience Trestle, right? Correct. Okay, awesome. Subscribe now. <laughs> so that's the big thing. What do we want you to do? Uh, what's the first step? It's actually, you know, is subscribing. Once you subscribe to Trestle, uh, you'll have you'll be able to see, and I'll show you real quickly uh, on the on our stage site how you can see which MLSs are available uh, and uh, see what what data feeds are available from there. And more importantly, as uh, Victor also mentioned, you know, what feeds are available. While Trestle uh, is going to uh, charge you a fee, which we'll show you here. Uh, show in a second on the next page, um, you still are responsible for uh, the fees that uh, MLS uh, providers uh, request for their data licensing. Awesome. So here, just to, yeah, for complete transparency, just to, to let you know where, where everybody stands on that, um, here's where, where the fees are. Um, and actually, I, I take that back to it. There was a typo. You got the I, I sent the wrong slide, Victor. I apologize. Um, it's it's just seventy five dollars per data feed. Uh, there is no monthly fee uh, on there uh, for a technology provider. So that that first one is is a misnomer there. Um, and uh, so it's seventy five dollars per data feed for a technology provider. It uh, doesn't matter how many. Um, agents, brokers, whatever is utilizing in that market, um, it's just $75. So to use as an example, uh, in Southern California or in California, uh, if you are uh, getting data from Santa Cor, uh, CRMLS, and MLS listings, uh, that your total fee to, uh, besides their fees, whatever they charge, uh, would be $225 a month. Excellent. For, I won't. Then, I won't put your slide, but I'll let I'll let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have one that's. This was a, an old slide, um, and, and as you can see, we really wanted to provide that uh, uh, a, a nominal fee to be able to do that, and it's really providing aggregated services uh, for you when you're in multiple markets to be able to do that. As I think Andy uh, 
very uh, well said as far as I couldn't believe you know how many people he has managing those data feeds uh, and it's a it's, it's quite a large task and so um, we're going to be doing that uh, for you uh, and being able to provide that one singular uh, singular aggregated feed awesome um, so go next So that by doing that, we're going to make you know take you from that that old uh, freight train that you saw to begin, hopefully to a bullet train to be able to uh, more more uh, quickly update your technology because we'll, you'll have a, a single aggregated feed and really put uh, you know more of your costs and stuff into development uh, and create some really cool products uh, for the industry. So, so do this you, is that. Do you want me to end your controls ahead. now, or do you want to go through these slides? If you can go to the last, how about we just go to the last slide and then I'll 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 take it because you know you really this is from an MLS to show you how they manage the feed so you can see but I guess what a lot of you are going to wonder you know not only what what's available now as we mentioned but also um, you know what's coming up next and I think um, uh, it's very important on that to be able to do that so from a technology provider as I mentioned CoreLogic data products. Um, are definitely on the pipeline and, and, and should be uh, installed into Trestle uh, by Q4 of this year. Um, we'll also be able to offer that uh, to brokers as well. Uh, but definitely lots of, of different things uh, coming into Trestle, uh, going out with the auditing platform uh, from a broker, broker standpoint to be able to have uh, an MLS be able to see you know who you're delivering data with and as well as for you to be able to uh, input that so it make it a lot easier from a reporting standpoint for you uh, for those MLSs that that really want uh, you know have a monthly report that do tiered tiered pricing or, or whatnot so uh, there's a lot of uh, cool things that are coming out but the first thing that's out right now as of today uh, is the ability for you to uh, access Trestle uh, as I mentioned subscribe uh, and be able to see what MLSs are in there it's kind of uh, going on at the same point while we had MLSs the, to let you know as far as how we staged this. Uh, MLSs registered, start, had the opportunity to start registering for Trestle in October. And as uh, Victor mentioned, the, the, the reason for that was to, to get RESO certified, uh, but also to then compile a RESO certified uh, database. And to do that takes time. And so the first phase was to get uh, MLSs registered, re request a, a, a uh, enable their RESO certified feed and get to, to RESO to get those feeds certified. Uh, and then once they did that, uh, we open in, we're opening it up to both MLSs and uh, technology providers for MLSs, one, to, to register their feeds. So we'll show you there's some that, that I already have. And they're in the process of doing that and uploading their, uh, setting their fees for their feeds, uh, as well as uploading their agreement or using a uh, CoreLogic default agreement uh, that they can use. Uh, and then at that point, once that's done, you can uh, be able to uh, ask for a feed. But in the meantime, you can see which MLSs are already in the process of doing that. So uh, we're really excited about that. So with that, um, Victor, if you would, let me have control. You bet. Yeah, I think one of the one of the things about Trestle that a lot of people don't understand is the document management component of it. Not only to manage the um, ability to submit and gain approval for the technology company, but also the three-party data license agreement that's signed by the agent, the MLS, the technology vendor, um, which I think you have coming up in Q4 of this year or something like that. But I, that's going to be a tremendous advantage and time saver for a lot of technology firms. Absolutely, and that actually, uh, the broker piece of being able to ha uh, have and manage those three-way agreements will be available uh, end of June. Um, so that's that's actually that that's uh, a lot. Um, it's more important than right now is obviously is to getting that uh, to be able to help the technology providers and MLSs manage this whole uh, workflow uh, than adding any other data assets. But the data assets will be uh, shortly coming after uh, NQ4. But you know, real quick to show you, here's a a, a fully baked. Uh, uh, technology provider uh, widget factory and I'm a widget uh, you'd be able to see real quickly from your connections of which where you are which products that involves what your connection status is so from pending approved broker contingency as you notice uh, you know anywhere from from where you are in the process status date and then once it's executed you can be able to start seeing that contract expiration date just from your dashboard um, you can definitely get more uh, information 
when we click on one to see you know what are the fee periods etc everything from there so um, the big thing that you got to do to start with is uh, as there we go, didn't hit the button um, to be able to, to do that and then it's really easy to add an MLS and I'm actually going to go to uh, a another I'm going to sign off of here and go to a another site just to show you how easy it is so right from the, this is the place where what what is the what's the website where technology companies will go to in order to sign up for trestle if they want to start playing with it you go to trestle.corelogic.com and you'll okay. be able to uh, log in and sign in directly but the big thing is, is so you know, how do you see you know what MLSs are involved, or how do I add, add an MLS and request the data feed? So from here, I want, as we mentioned, it's it's trained, so we get we have connections between two two folks, and I'm going to want to decide which product I'm going to use. Here, we'd actually go in and set up products right here, but just to, for the uh, time for the demo, and I know what you want to see is how easy it is to to look for a feed. We we set up, we created a product. We're going to select that product. Uh, and then we'd be able to go and scroll through all the MLSs that are currently uh, on Trestle if we want. But if we know exactly which MLS it is, um, we would be able to, to just go ahead and type it out uh, and get to which one we want. Um, and here that, I can, the one that was at the top, the Austin one, is that the test server? Or is that their um, live production no, site? No, that would, that would be their live production site. What, what is the one, the test environment well, that's we'll actually it. through that's that that's through reso that's a separate one not 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 in in trestle as of right now but oh, it's being okay. powered by it's being powered by the trestle database so same hardware behind it but no you correct. don't get this user interface okay correct because we don't want to take what they're registering and what we're registering so this is completely separate once you've registered on trestle we we, we do keep you uh, on the system, um, and especially so when, uh, if from an MLS standpoint, when an MLS sees you, they'll be able to approve you, or if they don't, everybody stays to, to, to maintain that track record of what you're doing uh, within the system. So that's that's uh, on our system here. So as you can see, it is uh, alphabetical order, as uh, as Victor pointed out, so you can have see everybody that's currently on there. Um, I can do it you know, from however many entries, so you can see everybody. Uh, to make it quick, we do have a lot of folks already on board uh, and looking to add more uh, as we go. MLSs are extremely excited about being able to deliver uh, their, their ARISA standard uh, feed. But I'm just going to go to a test one that I've set up um, and see that you know what is enabled and how it is. I can get uh, a real quick of what uh, current data feeds are available uh, with this MLS or, or, or could be offered. Um, I think you know right now as we're launching we want to keep it simple and so we're only really offering and focusing on IDX and IDX plus feeds both RETS and API um, in May we'll be offering uh, the back office feed as well as a vow and a stats package to be able to get there but for right now uh, as of today it's just IDX until mid-May uh, and then be able to offer additional fields, uh, different additional feeds from then. But to be just to see real simple of how easy it is, um, you'll have the ability to do that. Uh, if you'll notice, I didn't set up my uh, product to put a uh, uh, to support back office feeds, so it's not gonna. It's gonna just give me a heads up that I didn't set up the product to do that. Uh, but I will be able to to continue through the process. So that's the nice part. Uh, allowing you to do that, so I can see how much the fee that the fees are, etc., and at which time I can go directly here, preview the contract, get all the information about it, and if I like it, if I if, if I want to download it and look and see what I'm doing, I can download it right here, or I can just connect right there. and at which time it's going to let me know. It's going to send an email to you with the electronic copy for you to sign. Uh, we're using a, a third-party product uh, from uh, Incident and AuthentiSign. You would uh, sign the agreement, at which time, once you sign it, uh, it is sent to the MLS, and then the MLS would be able to approve it. And at, as soon as they approve it, it's instant, um, 
instant uh, access for you. So that's where everything is, and you can start seeing uh, where you are uh, in the process. Awesome. So with that, I know it's it's we're at twelve forty five with fifteen minutes. I didn't know if there'd be any questions or anything you got for, for me. We do have questions, so uh, we'll get started with that. Um, first question: To get a new client from some board or MLS, we'll have to first get an agreement with the board and pay their fees, check their rules. Now, are are you guys going to have e-commerce so people can pay the fees right off? We the do. We absolutely do. So it's one-stop shopping. So you actually be able to set up your payment information directly within Trestle. Uh, you'll get an itemized uh, statement uh, once a month uh, that'll have your uh, whatever fees that you are charged by those MLSs, as well as the $75 fee uh, to CoreLogic for those MLSs will be uh, on there in an itemized statement. Andy, so really what, to, Andy, what would ahead. that do to your credit card bill? <laughs> Well, are you guys, do you pay over a million dollars a year for data access fees? We pay over a million dollars a year to MLSs for data access right. fees, yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank those you very much for your support <laughs> of the industry. <laughs> and those are some serious frequent flyer points. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I think yeah. you'd be American Express Black. <laughs> right on. <laughs> um, so the next question is... Some people said that, that in their experience with the RISO Data Dictionary, some of the lookups are empty. Um, how would you provide us with a common lookup if all boards have different values in the lookups? How do you guys handle that, Andy? I mean, you, you said that there are nuances. How, how are you evaluating those lookups? Oh, I'm not the one to answer that, Victor. We, we have the data engineers that are doing that. <laughs> Kevin, do you have an opinion on that? <laughs> um, we'll actually be able to, there, there will be a, 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 an area where you'll be able to see uh, what the percentage of the fields that are covered uh, and being able to do that. But again, that's, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punt, this kind, kind of punt like Andy did. I mean, we do have the data engineers that are working on it, but you will be able to see um, the percentage of the fields that are covered. Can you show me the support tab here in Trestle? Yeah. What kind of support? So, yeah, so they go to technology. Provider support. So there's quite an extensive uh, extensive uh, information as far as from that uh, here that you can go through. We also have uh, a one eight hundred number uh, with support folks that are uh, uh, available through CoreLogic, um, and they're available eight a.m. to eight p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time uh, to help you uh, th if there is any uh, issues from there. Is there a bat phone number so when the data feed breaks in the middle of the night I can get help? There. There, there are email addresses, but as far as a middle of the night, no. Uh, we do, as I said, it's from a support standpoint, 8 a.m. To, to 8 p.m. Eastern. So we're trying to, to get it when, when, when the majority of the, uh, when, and unfortunately, as we all do, all know, uh, the bat signal's nice, but the majority of the users are on between 8 and 8, and, and we, we feel like that's going to be a, a to re really help out. But your, your data center is uh, fully fully powered up and staffed 24-7, 365, obviously. Oh, um, absolutely. As, as you said, we're also, you know, managing over 300 different MLSs uh, throughout the country and, and, and know what's going on. So uh, we're, we're, we're quite confident on that. Awesome. Um, there's a question here. Uh, do you have, um, do you, do you, are you going to have a ticketing system for vendors? Um, not at this time, but we are, uh, it, Building out the uh, the infrastructure on the support side and do do foresee having that, uh, we're actually implementing a new system to be able to do that. Where we should be able to, we'll, we'll, we will be rolling out very shortly. The next question is um, some uh, some test data. We talked earlier. Um, again, if you go to uh, the reso.org website, uh, there's information right on the homepage about how you can um, apply and get access to the uh, to the test servers that are available through Reso and the Austin market, which is powered by Trestle. Is there, is there any uh, test data other than the documentation here, Kevin, that um, vendors can experiment with? Do you have a test? No, not, 
not at this time. We really we're pushing out. We actually have another MLS that is uh, applied and would like us to add their data. So in the future, very shortly, uh, we would like to be able to have and show that you can you know you can get that feed from two two sources already aggregated and being able to play with that. But the first step was uh, you know partnering with Riso and having it from there, um, and then we'll we'll have what we're calling uh, the roundhouse. Again, keeping with the, the train theme, uh, there will be a test uh, test area that you could do that test feed and be able to play. But at this point, um, not uh, not right now. Awesome, uh, Andy. The next question is for you. What's the difference between um, a data feed from CoreLogic and a data feed from ListHub? Well, uh, ListHub provides us flat file FTP feeds currently. So that's a major difference. And because they're flat files, they're not deltas, they're full. So all the data we process for, for them, we have to reprocess it every time we get an update. There's no, there's no just variance uh, files. So with, with CoreLogic system, and we're not, we're, we're reviewing Trestle at this point. We, we have not started using it. It looks promising for us. Um, but one of, one of the promising features is that it, It'll be Rezo API access, which we can obviously just process variances and not have to reprocess the same listings over and over again. Yeah, I'll diverge for just a minute and explain something about that. Um, one of the key reasons why uh, Zillow Group left the ListHub network is because they didn't want to truck in 4 million listings a day and 2.2 million images a day because you have to process all of it every day, right? Um, whereas with with these modern solutions like Trestle or even the current access through each of the independent a MLSs, you can do incremental updates, which is a big savings in um, the amount of data that you're managing and handling on a day-to-day -day basis. I can't even imagine how long it takes to how long does it take to process that feed once you get it, Andy? Multiple hours. <laughs> yeah. So that data that the and and I I'm not. ListHub is a great partner for us, right? They they provide us a lot of data in markets where we don't have direct access. Uh, but it does, and, and I, I believe I've heard from them that they are working on ways to provide incremental updates and more real-time access. But currently, it's flat files that take multiple hours to process. So that's one of the challenges is, you know, it's updated in the MLS system, then it has to be picked up by ListHub, and then it has to be provided to us in a file, and then it has to be processed for us. So it could be, you know, 24 to 48 hours from the time a change is made in the MLS till when it appears, uh, when it goes through all those processes to actually appear on the site. That's a challenge. And, yeah, it, obviously that that's a major challenge when it comes down to like properties being marked as you know off market or no lot you know those, any products that try to keep the information of a price accuracy or a uh, status accuracy are really challenged by that delay. Yeah, and um, in, in our system, when, when we are getting incremental updates, we have a streaming process where, uh, for instance, if we're processing a thousand listings in an incremental update, our, our process does not wait for, if, if the first listing changed, it doesn't wait until listing 500 before it uh, displays that first change. It's a streaming process, right? So it's, it's near real time when we are getting incre incremental updates. You know, we, could, we can process, if a change is made in the MLS, it's probably live on our system within 30 minutes when it's incremental updates. And Kevin, is Trestle connected right, I mean, is it, is it connected right to your MLS database if you're hosting in that market? So the updates, as they're made in the MLS, are updated in real time on Trestle, or are you batch processing them? We're, we're processing them as well. And, and so right now it is about a two-hour. Uh, we're hoping by the uh, very shortly to get that down to 15 minutes. But we have to do the same thing as far as getting it from, uh, from our MLS as they do it and then getting that into the RISO uh, into the database to, to, to be able to then send out. So uh, as of right now, it's about two hours, but we're, we're going to have that down to about 15 minutes uh, quite shortly. So there, there are a number of questions here per fee. I, let me just clarify that. Whatever an MLS charges today isn't going to change. So if an MLS charges you a data license fee to access some type of their data, uh, you're still going to have to pay that. Trestle is going to make it more convenient for you to pay it. You can pay it by credit card, um, but you still have to pay it. Uh, but the Trestle fee is $75 per market per month, 
just a, there's a couple questions about that. So I think I have that right. Correct. Uh, if a particular market needs a new property feature, does that checkbox have to go through the RESO data dictionary first? Andy? Uh, when we're processing a feed directly from the MLS, uh, we're able to map whatever fields they provide to us, whether they're part of the data dictionary or not. But I think there's some restrictions to the data dictionary certification that uh, that you're only, you know, using that standard and not going outside that standard. Right. Uh, Kevin, any uh, any API usage limits on the connections? Um, for right now, we're as we're all going through this, we're 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 we're, we're being uh, good stewards of the. Uh, for the industry, and as of now, no. Uh, we we hope that everybody would uh, uh, be appropriate as far as the API calls, but um, uh, we do uh, have a provision in the agreement in case you guys uh, somebody does go uh, over, and we can we can come back and talk and, and maybe switch to a RETS feed if necessary. Uh, but as of now, as long as everybody is is playing nicely with everybody, there's there is no limits. Yeah, I mean, your your data center is pretty bulletproof, isn't it? Aren't you running, like, banking back office software on it? Well, we have all that on there. So, yes, we're we're pretty bulletproof on that, but we do know that there there are there can be uh, – we, we you don't want to say uh, completely bulletproof. Uh, there are instances or somebody that can, can create a, a, uh, a program that can take anything down, as we've seen from even Amazon. So uh, so I don't want to go 100% on that, but, yes, we, uh, we're, we are not having any limits uh, out the gate. Uh, there's a question here. It's a $75 per month per feed, but is there a setup fee or that's, there's no setup fee, right? There is no setup fee. There's, as far as from, from CoreLogic feeds, it's $75 per feed per month. Setup fees, as, as Victor, just to make sure we're all clear again, as, as Victor said with uh, MLSs, if they charge a setup fee, if any of those fees are, are separate from, from our fees. Uh, so there is no, uh, but but for us, it's seventy-five dollars per feed per month. Awesome. Um, all right. So somebody's just confirming that MLS fees are paid by credit card, and then CoreLogic pays the MLS. Um, is yeah, there and, those eight, fee, and those fees actually CoreLogic does not pay the MLS. That we're actually using a third-party uh, banking product in the background, and, and core, those those fees don't even touch our, our bank account. Those go directly oh, to like the MLS sets up their own uh, uh, direct deposit, and those fees go directly to the MLS uh, when 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 that credit card is charged. Is the API documentation only available after you set up a vendor account at trestle.corelogic.com? Yes. Awesome. Um, somebody asked me if there will be a recording of this webinar. Yes, we have recorded it, and we will send it around to all the attendees today. Uh, and those are all of our questions. So um, we're going to finish two minutes early. So, uh, oh, wait, there's one more. Uh, can we access listing history data, meaning if a listing goes from active to pending to sold, we can see the three instances of that data? I don't know the answer to that. I'm, I'm not quite sure how to answer that one. I mean, I know with the IDX Plus and having um, solds uh, and being available, depending on the market, if they're available, you know, for, for three plus years. Uh, but but uh, no, I don't believe uh, being able to do that. So there's a lot of a lot of vendors, and I'm sure Andy can talk to this a little bit as well. I mean, they have they have the ability to um, access the data once it's on their side that allows them to you know, look up a listing by MLS ID, for example, and find out information about what was transmitted on it and when it was transmitted. Um, in my experience, most of that isn't handled by the RET server, per se, or the MLS data server, but handled by your own system. So uh, is that the way you guys handle it? Andy, once it's on your side, you look it up? Well, but if, we're not, if the MLS is not providing any off-market data, then the listing disappears without any tr uh, trail of what happened to it, right? So that is a challenge and one of the reasons we're trying to get off-market data for every market that we service so that we can provide the, the trail of what happened to a listing. It's a poor consumer experience when you have 
you know, somebody has a listing saved in their in their profile, and then one day it just disappears, and you're not able to tell them this is what happened to it, right? Yeah. So if you don't have off market, if if you don't have access to off market data, it basically just disappears. You can retain it in your own system, but you don't have any evidence of what actually happened with that property. You assume. I mean, you could assume that it went pending, but it may have expired. It may have been withdrawn. So if you don't have access to off-market data, it's difficult to show the trail. Awesome. Um, there's a quick question about uh, office uh, agent and office roster. Kevin, can you dismiss your uh, calendar reminder? Um, there is a question here about uh, are you getting office and agent rosters in your feeds? I know you said it's a property-centric database, but are you also – managing the identities of the agents and brokers? Uh, yes. Yes, we are. We, you, we will, you will be able to access all of that as well. Okay. Um, somebody asked a question about how many MLSs, Mark, I think we saw in here that you have uh, 102 active markets today, and those are changed. That, that, how often are you adding a market? Is that happening like a few a day, or what's your cadence on that? It, it, you know, some obviously, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we've been open for MLSs to be able to set up uh, and you know get their RESO data dictionary certification to start with, so that, that they can do that. Um, and so we we've, we've got that. And once we got that to a critical mass, we were able to open this up for them to set their fees their feeds up, uh, and then give you uh, access. So uh, that is, you know, we we've now launched, and so now we're we're seeing a steady increase in daily. We're getting uh, new MLSs. Uh, that are accessing the system and asking to join. So there's a question here about sold data, and, and I'll just take a crack at that. So the way sold data works um, with MLSs in the country today is that the the general National Association of Realtors IDX model rules and regulations indica indicate that unless it's a market where sold record information is confidential, Texas is a great example of that, um, then sold data should be in the IDX feed and will be supported by um, Tressel. So, so that's kind of where things sit with uh, sold data. So sold data will be there um, if and only if it's available in that market. Um, somebody else was asking about what the timing is for you to be able to process the, the agent IDX agreement. I think you mentioned that. But I, yeah, Q2? that's... Uh that's at the end of the end of Q2. It's it's uh, end of June. Okay, and then uh, flood and tax data. When that becomes available, that will be an additional fee. Is that can you buy it by like county or state, or do you have to buy the whole kit and caboodle? Um, we're currently looking at that. I mean, it, it, we're we're looking especially from an API standpoint. It can be by call. Um, okay. So, it, and we're trying to do that. There's different. There will, there will definitely be different prices and different packages available. Excellent. And then you don't pub, uh, the the list of MLSs that's that are on Trestle today. That is available for you to view once you create your Trestle account, right? Correct. Awesome. Well, I think I just got through all of. Oh, wait, a couple more. Uh, What is the advantage of using Trestle compared to just using Reso? Uh, the question there, uh, the answer there is that Trestle you get, rather than pulling from 100 markets, you can pull from one source and get up to 100 markets if you're applied to all of them. So you know, one of the things that Andy talked about earlier in the webinar today is that there are feed modifications that happen each and every day. I think by his count, there was something like 60 a month across the nation but that they're dealing with. So depending on how many MLSs you're in, you're going to have some incidents of breakage where feeds are either changing or markets are changing or there's some problem with the data feed or whatever. So a lot of that maintenance that goes with maintaining 100 um, data points is being handled by Trestle, so you don't have to have the internal resources to do that. Uh, somebody said, any insight about how Bright MLS will develop seven plus merged MLSs? How many feeds will it be? My understanding is it's one. Correct. Uh, is there going to be support for VAL feeds? Yes, coming soon. Uh, yes. 
who can we follow up with regarding more technical questions? Kevin, is, is there a resource like Kristen or somebody on your end that you want to provide contact information for? Um, right now, just go to the, if you go to the, through the support system, we'll be able to to, to manage and, and ticket those things in, in the proper manner. So if you could just uh, through the support uh, documents, you'll see the one uh, eight hundred number or the email address, and we'll be able to make sure that we get you uh, the right answers. Awesome. Um, any changes to how Trestle ham handles images over versus what MLS what you're doing today on your MLS servers? Um, no. Okay. Is there, uh, are you going to let people know if an MLS decides to pull out of Trestle? Um, I mean, there'll be a notification. If that did happen, you would receive a notification and there would be a, a time frame. It's funny that we, we did make uh, Trestle a 30 day, uh, it's a month to month agreement, not just for, for you, but for the MLSs. I wanted to make it easy for MLSs to do it, but surprisingly enough, we're having MLSs come back and, and say, no, we'd like to make this a year or, or longer agreement. So um, you obviously, it, you will get plenty of notice uh, of when uh, a, a change is being made by an MLS. Um, there's quite a few questions here about images. Apparently, a lot of vendors would prefer you to, to host the images and just provide them a link that's available through the API only? Um, let, let me get back with you on that one, Victor. I actually am, I, we have some of our technical folks on and, and I'm getting a, a note back too, so maybe I'll be able to answer that in a second after you get to the next question. Oh, that's my last question, so we have to wait. We're beyond our <laughs> timeline, so we can wait a second. Um, again, thank you everyone, uh, while he looks that up, thank you everyone who has attended. Um, I don't seem to be getting any more questions beyond uh, the, hum, the last humdinger. Um, but we will uh, send a recording of this uh, webinar today to everybody who was on our call. So if you want to share this internally or go back and review any of the sections of it, you'll, you'll be able to do that. Um, I also really want to thank Andy. Um, I know that you're a busy guy and I'm very grateful for you to take time out of your day to kind of tell everybody what it looks like to operate um, MLS data feeds at scale. Um, I do think that you guys probably have as, as much if not the most amount of experience of anyone in our industry and I, I really appreciate you sharing all that information with us. So you're awesome. Kevin, as always, uh, we wish you luck. I think Trestle is going to be a great product. It, it clearly is going to solve a lot of problems for a number of vendors in our industry and I think at the end of the day provide a more efficient and lower cost service to agents and brokers um, by virtue of their MLSs participating in this. And certainly a lot easier to get your data from one robust data source than it is to, to manage uh, dozens or hundreds of data feeds. So thanks a lot for that. And uh, we can either ship the answer to that question Oh, the answer right now is not 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 uh, for RETS, It's not at this time, um, and okay. we're working on that for the future. But for API, yes, it's just a URL. Okay, so if you use the the Trestle API in any of these markets, you will be able to uh, access the photo without having to store it on your end. Very good, nice job. Well, thanks again, everyone, and uh, thanks to everyone who who came here today. We really appreciate everyone's participation, and we'll talk to you again soon on a future RE technology, RE Techinar. Have a good day. Thanks, Victor.